Welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. We've got a lot of fun stuff on this week's show. We're going to take you out trout fishing with Michigan trout guru Jim Bedford. We'll also swing through the Midland area for an exciting turkey hunt there. And we'll show you what one group is doing to give back to the future generation of sportsmen here in Michigan. Lots of great stuff on this week's show. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jenny Olson and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees the sweet smell of nature's in the air From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream Shining like a sportsman's dream It's the love of Michigan we all share Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Greenstone Farm Credit Services Making recreational land ownership possible Across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. By Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping. From bug spray and tents to GPS and gas, Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Meyer. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore with its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses. Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. By Country Smokehouse, offering a variety of meat products, Country Smokehouse is located three miles south of I-69 on M53 just south of Imlay City. Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen. Hi, I'm Jordan Brown. For this week's show, I was able to do something I've wanted to do since I started working at Michigan Out of Doors a couple of years ago, and that's highlight one of the best trout fishermen we have here in the state of Michigan, Jim Bedford. Today Jim and I would be fishing a small southern Michigan stream in hopes of finding a few nice brown trout on this beautiful spring morning. Working our way up a small southern Michigan stream and we're uh, going upstream and we're tossing both spinners and plugs hoping to, to find some decent sized brown trout. The fish are almost always cover oriented and you're looking for places where they can, they can feed effectively and uh, and still have some cover, a little bit of a roof over their head, so they can, you know, they can intercept whether drifting insects or a minnow or whatever happens to go by. They can, they can kind of swim out and pounce on it, but still be real close to cover, so they feel protected because their their number one enemy is, you know, are herons and other water birds that uh, they can feed on. It. Jim spends as much time as any angler in the state fishing for trout has been doing so for quite some time. It's a passion he picked up a little later in life than some anglers, but he's certainly making up for lost time. I didn't have any anglers in my family. My parents didn't fish, and so I was kind of on my own, and my early fishing was river fishing for, for other species than trout because that's what I could bicycle to. But then once I got to college and got introduced to, to wading and, uh, and, uh, and trout, I really got bit by the bug hard and I've been doing it ever since and there's nothing I like more than walking up a trout stream and seeing what I can catch and you're always, you know, it's never boring because you got, the stream is changing and you look for the, what the water looks like around the next bend and we also have a, you know, a lot of wildlife, you know, streams are a magnet for wildlife. Alright, come back, come back, one more try buddy. You know, the bigger holes will hold the bigger trout, usually, but you're also will find that if there's a 
a small spot, a little spot of cover, a little bit shallower that's in the vicinity of a big hole, you know, the bigger fish can use that as their feeding station and feed there and then they know that they're close to the big hole to get back for safety if they need to. But trout feed most efficiently when the water is relatively shallow and relatively fast because if it's a dip hole and there's a whole bunch of, uh, you know, the, the whole water column can hold the, hold the morsels and the, the insect nymphs and whatever else might be drifting downstream. So they like to feed in shallow water if, it can be, if they can be protected there and also have their, their resting area close at hand. Jim stressed a couple of things to me throughout the morning. One, when using this method, make sure to use a snap swivel so you can easily change back and forth between lures. And secondly, you must perfect the underhand cast. The underhand cast is really important. An underhand pendulum cast allows you to, to flip the lure underneath the branches and, 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 you're all, and you can watch the lure go to the target so that you don't have to, you're not worried about what's behind you or side of you, you're just, you're watching it swinging it back with a pendulum. We can even do that here maybe. And, and uh, we're swinging it back, swinging it back, and then we just, you know, we just send it forward. And, uh, and that way it stays low, it stays underneath the cover, and, and you get to watch it go to its target. You can even make mid-air corrections if you need to. Even though it's a little stream, because the, the trout utilize a lot of terrestrial food in addition to what's in the stream, and you got the same, obviously you got the same amount of bank in a, in a 20 foot wide stream as you do in a 50 foot wide stream, that uh, the potential is there to, to grow really nice trout. And, and it really gets exciting when you're one on one in a, and you're eyeball to eyeball with a 20 inch brown that's you know, only 10 feet from me in a small creek. So that's, been fishing for a long time, but I still get really excited when those events happen. So I hope I never lose that excitement. There we go, a little bigger, more decent one. In recent years, the plugs have seemed to have done a little bit better with catching the bigger fish because they're obviously a a fish is going to uh, hit a minnow plug is going to be a fish eater and it's going to be a little bit bigger fish and I was hoping to get some bigger fish today. That doesn't mean a spinner, you still catch big fish with spinners, but, uh, but in general, little pocket water where you got to get down in a hurry and you don't have a lot of room to retrieve the lure and it's, uh, the water's pretty fast, that's ideal for a spinner. The spinner is the most versatile lure. But when you do have a relatively long hole, a long Relatively flat water, it's 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 the plug is really effective. The fish, these brown trout especially, really key in on these uh, on these what represents a minnow in the stream. Fishing small streams presents a whole new level of challenges. Smaller streams are affected by weather conditions more so than larger rivers, and they also require a higher level of stealth to be successful. All that aside, you'll be hard pressed to find Jim fishing for trout anywhere else. Well, I like the, the intimacy of the, of the smaller streams and something that I know that I can, you know, I'll always be able to wade and I won't have to worry about getting in and out of the stream and having unweightable water. And, and to be honest, the, the smaller streams are a little bit more lightly fished. They don't, 
you know, there's not enough room in most of the streams I fish to, to fly fish, you know, at least a conventional fly fishing where you have a back cast. You can still roll cast in these streams, but I just like the intimacy of the small stream and then the fact that even though they're small streams, they can produce really nice trout. I just emphasize how much fun it is to walk up a stream and the, you know, when the trout aren't biting, you're still going to have fun. So. It's hard to beat a spring morning on any of the trout rivers throughout the state. And when the fish are biting, that's just a bonus. Special thanks to Jim Bedford for letting me tag along on this beautiful spring day here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Hey, special thanks to Jordan Brown for bringing us that story on Jim Bedford, one of the finest trout anglers we have here in the state of Michigan. What we're going to do now is shift gears and cover a teenager. Actually, we've been covering lots of teenagers over the last couple of months, something new for us here at Michigan Out of Doors, that are really avid users of the outdoors. It's kind of a segment of the population that sometimes we in the outdoor world kind of write off. Well, we shouldn't because there's a lot of them that really know their stuff. I was actually recently able to get out with a teenager in the Midland area, do a little turkey hunting. It was a beautiful morning. We had a good backdrop with a few pines. Um, we set up some camo netting in front of us. Um, and I figured that uh, we had been uh, scouting there for a couple weeks and I figured that the toms would come in uh, generally in the same spot from the hens there. So I figured that they would come down the fence line or the property line and um, go right along the field edge. Yeah, so we got on the field edge we thought they'd be on. Well, Hunter here has an online TV show that he and his buddies have recently started. And he shot me an email wondering if we would be in the Midland area to follow him on a turkey hunt. Well, I met him an hour or so before we were watching these birds work their way in. It seems this teenager, well, he had done his homework and we had two nice birds coming our way. I just, uh, I saw him coming out of the field there. The sun was in my eyes. I couldn't, I couldn't really uh, see him very well, but I saw the red head shining on the sun and they came right at us. And I said to my buddy, Robert, you better take the one on the left. And uh, he was a little bit uh, where he couldn't see him. The brush was in there, but I shot the one on the right and the one on the left uh, uh, flew off and he emptied his gun on it. But uh, oh well, we tried, got a few more spots to try. So we're gonna go hit those and see what happens. Hunter's dad and some family were on hand to share in the excitement of a quick and gorgeous spring turkey hunt. All right, here, Hunter, let's take a peek at what you got here. Let's see the beard and all this good stuff. Look at that. It's got to be a nine or ten incher, eh? Yep. Well, that was a pretty exciting hunt, wouldn't you say? Yeah, uh, yeah we heard them gobbling all morning. They didn't gobble till about, uh, I don't know, it was Probably a quarter to seven. They were really late. It was late before they came down. Yeah. But it panned out, and we got a nice one. I figured they'd come into the field, and they did. And actually, uh, there was a lot more than we actually thought. So. Yeah. Well, what do you do when you have a plan work just like you were hoping? Well, you drive around and tell all your buddies. We stopped at the local country store and told the story. After that, we did what every turkey hunter hopes his morning will end like, eating a big breakfast before 9 a.m. with a tom in the back of the truck. We had hoped for a double on this setup and we were very close. And we stopped at Hunter's place to take care of the bird and he showed me around his little hunting cabin. 
Well, Hunter, walk me through this little cabin here. What are we, what are we looking at here? Uh, this is just a few of the stuff I've shot, a little bit of the stuff I've shot over the years. Right there is my turkey from last year, you can see. Uh, it had a nine and a half inch beard on it. Okay. Um, that's my turkey from two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, these are, uh, this is a muskrat we got this year at Trapping. Um, and then the mink, we didn't get that, but that was my grandpa's. Um, okay. This is my four point from uh, last year. Uh, that was a nice one we got. Okay, and this is you and your first fish here. <laughs> yeah, first fish on Sturgeon Creek. Nice. Uh, and what's this little cabin? This is like a little hunting shack for you? Or yeah, what? this is a hunting shack for me and my buddy Robert. Uh, we come out here a lot and just hunt, do food plot stuff, do deer management and stuff like that. So we always try to, every week we always try to get out and outdoors. Jeez. Here's Loft a, up top. Yep. Man. A few of our stuff we've shot over the years. Uh, fish, turkeys, coyotes. Um, Very nice. Fish. Man, this is quite the little deer camp here. <laughs> well, I don't remember seeing a little trapper's cabin that was quite as nice as this one. Now, I hope Hunter thanks his parents every chance he gets, and not just for setting him up with a cool little cabin, but for taking the time and effort to introduce him to the out of doors and all that it holds. The boys were able to get Robert his bird as well, and they're hoping to get some of their hunts on tape to share with all who are interested. Today was just one of those mornings you dream of. Perfect weather, the rising sun, nice birds, and good company. Simply all you can ask for in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, a lot of times here at Michigan Out of Doors, when we do stories about getting youth into the outdoors, it's all about the youth, and it's all about kind of promoting and preserving this outdoor lifestyle and keeping it going for generations to come, and that is very important. But sometimes we forget the people that are there actually helping out at these events, well, they're having a lot of fun at the same time. Here we are at uh, Lake Lansing uh, Park South, out on the east side of East Lansing, and we have our third annual Bill Earl Youth Fishing Program today, and we named that program after a gentleman in our club, the Steelheaders, died in 2010, and we just did this in his honor because he loved to help kids learn about the outdoors. And so we set this up three years ago, it's our third annual uh, event, and we uh, get the kids registered, we get a formal picture of them so that we can recognize them in uh, candid shots that will take the rest of the morning. And then they get to go, as soon as they get their formal picture, they get to go over and look at uh, water quality indicators. This is called a dichotomous key, okay? Now you can just look at a picture if you want and go back up to the top, or you can start out here and ask questions. Like look at this creature right here, okay? We know what it is already, but let's figure it out, okay? Does it have a shell or not a shell? No what does it look shell. like? He has no shell. So you go over here to the no shell section. Does it have legs or no legs? Legs! And how many legs does it have? Let's see, it said, does it have 10 Six. plus, four pair, or three pair? Three pair. three pair. Okay, so now we're in this section, which is three pair. Does it have wings or no wings? We try to highlight events where sportsmen are doing what they can to not only pass on their love of the outdoors, but also show the community that they live in that they care about our natural resources. Recently, this event here on the shores of Lake Lansing was doing both. Teaching kids and adults alike was a big part of why these sportsmen were here today. We get them into three learning stations, and, and the first one is tackle and rigging the, of the rods and reels, and it's a rod and reel they'll get to keep and take home with them. They don't know that yet, but that's, that'll be theirs, along with the tackle box that we've already given them at, at check-in. And the second uh, uh, learning station is ethics and regulations. How long does it have to be? 14. So is it long enough? No. Almost. Is it the right season for bass? No. So, so should I have this? No. Okay, so so what do you guys think happened? Some, somebody was fishing and they decided they wanted to keep it anyways uh, when they caught it because uh, they thought that they didn't, they weren't going to get caught. Right? So I, I went and found them. And they had this fish and they had some other ones. They had some pike that were too short. The pike were still alive. So we put the pike back in the water and they survived. This one was already dead. 
So what do you think happened to that guy? Did he get to keep his fish? No. Nope. What do you think he got to keep instead? Yeah. Well, he didn't go to ticket. jail. He got a ticket. A ticket. And what does a ticket mean? He had to pay money. He had to pay. It means he had to go and talk to a judge and try to explain to the judge why he kept a fish that he wasn't supposed to. I would imagine these kids will think twice before they keep a short fish. It was pretty cool to see a CO here today helping teach the kids about outdoor ethics. And our third station is casting. And so once they learn how to safely handle the rod and reel and, and, and make safe casts and learn how to not hook other people, they have completed the whole three lessons and then they finally get to go down to the lake and fish. Now the kids did come here to fish, but they got some really good instruction as well. About 40 volunteers were on hand today, including Mike Bodecker, shown here, helping a kid learn to cast. Now, do you think this youngster knew that the man helping him was one of the all-time world champion ice fishing anglers across the country? Well, he didn't, and it didn't matter at all. All he knew was that this guy was here to help him. How great is that? Okay, before you get ready to go, we've got a what, what little bait boxes here for you. Each of you to get, get one. Bait. That's your bait in there. Is it live bait? Yep. Now we also had Jim Bedford here today, the man that we highlighted in our first story on this week's show. Another example of some of our best sportsmen in the state taking the time to give back and help teach a kid about the sport they love so much. It challenges all of us. You know, what are you doing to pass on your love of the outdoors and what am I doing? Hopefully a day like this spurs all of us in some way or another to be doing our part. And let me tell you, the guys here that were helping out today, they were having a ball. Now, Ty, how many fish have you caught before? Um, I think that in my life I've caught about five. Okay. So what do you think about this class today? Is this kind of fun? Yeah. What has been the best part about it? Um, I kind of liked the casting. Okay. That was my favorite part. Yeah, and you're the first one to catch a fish, so you must be the best fisherman here. <laughs> <laughs> some of the kids got to try their hand at some very oversized waders today as well. And there was laughter and smiles about everywhere you looked. Now to be honest, there wasn't fish everywhere you looked. The lake was high and we had a tough time getting to where the fish were. But some fish were caught. And hopefully what was caught today was the love of the sport. Thanks to the folks from Trout Unlimited, the Red Cedar Fly Fishing Group, Mid-Michigan Steelheaders, Ingham County Parks, MSU Department of Fish and Wildlife, and Project Fish for helping keep our outdoor lifestyle alive and well. Everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. A couple quick things before we go. We mentioned it on last week's episode, but coming up this weekend, June the 1st, there's going to be a one-day walleye fishing tournament on Saginaw Bay. If you'd like some more information on that, you can check out our friends at Frank's Great Outdoors. You can give them a call. Also, the Saginaw Bay Walleye Club is involved in that. It's a one-day event. We're going to have a camera there. It should be a lot of fun. Also, if you watch that segment that we just had on Michigan Out of Doors where we showed all those kids fishing and it was part of that big group effort from lots of different conservation groups, well, one of the groups involved was Project Fish and we featured Project Fish over the years here at Michigan Out of Doors. It's been in existence for about 17 years, primarily funded through Michigan State University. Well that funding has changed and so if you'd like to see Project Fish or a similar uh, kind of an organization moving forward, get a hold of us here at Michigan Out of Doors. We can connect you with those folks to find out maybe that's something that you would like to be involved in and in getting kids into the outdoors. We always support that here at Michigan Out of Doors and if we can connect some of you to make that happen, we'd love to do it. Uh, also something in the news that recently just happened is that the the NRC, the Natural Resources Commission, did approve a wolf hunting season for this year, 2013. It's going to actually start on November the 15th, but tags will start being available in the first part of August. You can go to the DNR's website to get all the particulars, but it's going to be a limited hunt. They're going to try to harvest about 50 animals, and they're going to have about 1,200 tags that they're going to give out. Uh, and then once they reach that quota, that those hunt units will be shut down. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out this year as we have our first wolf season here in Michigan, or at least it looks like that's going to happen. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's show. There's lots of great things going on around our state right now and hopefully if you join us right back here next week we'll have more great action right here on Michigan Out of Doors. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Zimmer Roofing and Construction in Port Huron featuring Duralast roofing systems made in Michigan. Zimmer Roofing and Construction provides installation, maintenance, service, and repair serving commercial and residential clients on the web at zimmerroofing.com. By Propane, exceptional energy. 
the propane retailers promote the safe use of Michigan-produced gas energy in homes, farms, and businesses across our great state. Learn more at usemichiganpropane.com. By Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping. From bug spray and tents to GPS and gas, Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Meyer. By Country Smokehouse, offering a variety of meat products, Country Smokehouse is located three miles south of I-69 on M53, just south of Imlay City. Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen. Closed captioning is brought to you by Propane Exceptional Energy. Propane retailers promote the safe use of Michigan-produced gas to outdoor enthusiasts across our great state. When I want to fire away, I'm bigger. I'm gonna be someone. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe. St. Marie and back again I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love 